Why hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 565, that is Cinco Say Cinco of the Agostino Zynga show, I hope it finds you well wherever you may be, wherever you may be, I hope it finds you well, la, 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 la. how am I? I'm doing pretty good, all things considered, I'm doing pretty well, I cannot complain, I have rediscovered my love for cycling, I think I mentioned on this pod many times prior, but also to friends for many, many years, I wanted to get a bicycle, Um, I was an avid bicycle rider a few years back, I used to ride that little um, BMX 26 inch bike around everywhere, I think I made a video about wanting to buy a 26 inch bike BMX a few years ago too that I didn't obviously follow up on because I'm the king of procrastination but then I recently decided a couple of months ago to finally bite the bullet put my mouth where put my money where my mouth is with my first paycheck decided to go out straight away and buy a bike before I did anything else because usually when it comes to all big purchases you usually kind of put it off and then by the time you want to pay for it, all your bills are gone now. And then you've all this, you know, you don't have enough money to pay for it. And you start justifying the fact that you don't have it because of money. When really you got the money, you just start wasting it on frivolous things and just maybe prioritize the thing that you actually need to get, then you can get a bike. And I've always said, especially for people like myself or others who maybe have, you know, illusions of working for yourself, working in the creative industry, one of the benefits I think of working a kind of nine to five a regular job is that of course you get a regular income so that you can use that money to then do the things that you actually want to do and you also have you know the other benefit of having a regular income is that you can buy stuff like you know laptops um you can maybe rent out a studio for maybe a year you can get like a desktop computer you can maybe buy a printer like loads of really big bulky stuff that you maybe wouldn't have the funds to splurge on in one hit you can go and do by yourself again like i said um, a bicycle you know maybe move apartment whatever you can do those little those fit no little things but those kind of life admin kind of purchases is usually quite good to do when you have a regular income coming in because maybe when you end up doing freelancing stuff you might not have the ability to kind of you know splurge on a one grand laptop because you're still waiting on invoices from like a year ago so take advantage of it so i did that took my own advice bought the bike and i'm loving it i'm absolutely loving it it's been an absolute godsend to have the bicycle to be going back from raves especially since i haven't really been drinking much or anything so when I'm going to these parties, I'm going to these raves, I'm basically be able to go attend, attend it like a gig, which I wouldn't advise, especially if someone like myself who likes to get on it. It's not really the best thing to do to go to a party, just attend it like a gig, but being an avid or kind of aspiring DJ myself also, it's actually quite nice to be able to go to a party and just check it out for the sake of checking it out. That's been pretty interesting or entertaining or illuminating in some way shape or form and then I also have the benefit of being able to kind of jet home in the 20 minutes depending on where distance the club is if it's a fold it's basically 20 minutes if it's you know anywhere further it's basically half an hour 40 minutes but I get also the opportunity to get some fresh air you know um, if I was drinking I'd get a chance to sober up or whatnot it's really a godsend it really is and it kind of reminded me why I used to ride my bike so often obviously back in the day it was a bit different because I was working around the sort of like Shoreditchy area um, and I was going out around that area too like within that kind of five mile radius of like Shoreditch up, and, up until maybe Stoke Newington or something that's where I kind of you know hang around for the most part so my life basically revolved around going to work you know riding up that one big road and then riding back that one big road all the way back home again to east so it kind of was a bit easier nowadays you know because I go out to different places I'm having to go to travel in places in north maybe parts of east I'm not obviously you know in a in an office I work from home for the most part especially to during the, since the post pandemic or during the pandemic so it kind of makes that a bit more difficult but you know especially for working from home having the ability to go out on your bike here and there and kind of mix up the scenario or the scenery is pretty good i'm not going to lie so i'm really happy i did that definitely one of the best buys i've done in a while so that's been something has been um, a great benefit to my life the last couple of weeks or days actually um or no yesterday or the last couple of weeks yesterday i finally decided to take some time out and fix the keyboard of my macbook air 
my kind of um sacred machine that has basically held me through held me down through thick and thin allowed me to write cvs allowed me to send emails update my podcast i i did everything on that macbook air i think for you guys who have been um watching or checking out my channel for a while you would have known that i tried to live stream a few times using my macbook air and it went really really badly because my computer is just too packed with too many things on there i tried to run my record box with my dj i tried to have my itunes on there with over you know two thousand songs or whatever not like crazy amount of stuff on there i tried to run photoshop illustrator um you know crazy like did a bit of iMovie stuff on there like crazy amount of stuff so i kind of pushed it to its edge and obviously in macbook air is basically a light power user type of machine it's not really meant for you know all the things that i basically said maybe one or two of those programs you could use but not all of them especially yeah i'll do photo so i did the whole abode suite i had adobe suite sorry uh, adobe suite um imovie uh garage band uh, whatever all those things included it went to the edge and then i remembered i actually have a pretty sturdy macbook pro from like 2015 i think this is the one in it right and it works like an absolute dream um so i updated that i got a new when's it from actually this macbook pro is from 2012 actually not 2015 it's even older than that 2012 macbook pro but it's absolutely bulletproof i updated the ram um, got 16 gigs of ram in there i got a one terabyte hard drive in there too so i basically went all the way for that one and then basically i'm going to use this as my main sort of like streaming computer sort of thing and if so far so good i can't really complain when it comes to streaming and recording it's been a pretty much a dream but then my macbook air died on me a little bit so i had to update that and then my keyboard messed up and the t fell out at first it's just the, the front little clip of the t so i could basically clip it back in from time to time when it'll pop out but then over time the white plastic thing that holds the letters together on the keyboard of the macbook that got lost then i started using just a little button the little rubber button that's there and started using that to press and then that that got lost and then when i kept pressing the actual you know pad with the chip is or the sensitivity but whatever it is in there it then started to die down and then that didn't work and then for some reason the ineffectiveness of the t then affected my ability to press five so i couldn't press five on the keyboard i couldn't press t an absolute horror show for whatever reason i kind of just ran with it i had a t and a five either i'd, I'd click the virtual keyboard that you can use on your macbook pro or i had it pasted on a little notepad or post it i'll just copy and paste if i need to write a t and whatever so absolute madness to type imagine me typing you know with typing my t out with the control v or the command v nightmare bought a new keyboard youtube had to fix it and it was an absolute nightmare basically you did fix up you know the keyboard of a macbook or even any macbook i'd imagine you have to strip the entire computer you have to take off the screen you have to take off the 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 motherboard the ios board the speakers the fan you got to strip the entire thing just to get to the keyboard so it's an absolute pain in the ass and obviously i've got really massive giant gorilla hands so you don't say gorilla hands if you're black yeah yeah I'm, I'm, yeah i've got massive gorilla hands so um that wasn't the easiest thing to do and it took me the best part of what three hours to do um so i reminded myself then during the time i was doing it why it took me so why i kind of kept putting it off because it's a really difficult task but i'm glad i did it because i saved myself some money and i also got a chance to basically um fine tune some of my electronic repairing skills so that was pretty decent so now the macbook air is back on track and working well i can type well with that the macbook pro is back on track and i can use that and do what i'm doing now at the moment so really there's no excuse for me not to be blogging i haven't been blogging in a while i'm really regretting it i would love you to, i just love you to kind of having like a journal in terms of being able to kind of document stuff i'm kind of thinking about and looking at that didn't really relate to podcasting because i think at the moment what i've done is i've replaced my blog with the podcast obviously because i talk about the same sort of things i would have spoken about on my podcast that i would do in a blog but i think sometimes the written form you just can get across things differently right you can get emotions feelings ideas insights perspectives across in a different way in terms of the written form and of course the opportunity for me maybe down the line to write my own book which i would love to do my own novel would obviously come through the practice of being able to write consistently you know every day a set number of days and i always looked at somebody like a seth godin as an example um this entrepreneur kind of startup guy um seth godin who i basically 
read loads of his books, right? I think the latest, no, the last one I read, latest one was Purple, Purple Cow back in the day. But he's a really influential dude, and he used, has a blog that I used to check out a lot of the times. But I don't really haven't checked that in a while. Um, Seth Godin blog, right? Let's see if I can find it. Seth Godin blog, and he blogs basically every single day without fail. And you know, over the years, he's kind of been able to you know have some really great insights on his blog basically because of that or just being able to kind of practice the art of writing every single day without fail and you sometimes come across some really interesting insights or he's able to just kind of you know sharpen his um, writing skills over time and it's something that I've kind of wanted to do for the longest time but I've never been able to do it I think the longest time I did it consecutively was maybe 26 days or something but this guy's been doing it every single day for many 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 years and he's got you know an entire blog here kind of dedicated to it so i kind of did have an excuse in the back of my head oh the reason why i haven't been blogging is because my macbook pro macbook air sorry uh from 2017 it had a missing t and it wasn't working too well and i couldn't use it then oh it was a macbook pro from 2012 that wasn't working because the hard drive died but i fixed this i got it all back up and running there's no excuse really. i should get back on it and this is me basically publicly declaring it to everybody so you can hold me to it and i can hold myself to it and i need to get back on the blog and tip of things and kind of get back to writing again because i do miss writing on my blog and doing all that great stuff because you know why the hell not why the hell not um talking about things i'm doing also make sure you check out my website agassinozinga.com for all updates regarding myself like i said before the shop isn't like running running at the moment i don't even know why it's still there at the moment why is it saying this now um i don't have anything listed on there i don't think at the moment nope but it should be coming up soon so check that out very soon i should be having um many different things on there primarily little zines and stuff that i self-produced a while back that i'm going to put up on there and some other things are also going to be coming soon as well so definitely check that out but for the most part there'll be little self-published uh published scenes i'll put together there'll be a nominal fee maybe a couple of pounds i'll put them up for just to kind of get them out of the door and stuff to give you an idea of what i do and to ship things and most importantly and then of course there'll be prints as well that i've kind of done in terms of based off some of the photography i've taken this of the picture from um 2019 or something or trip i went to or, uh, for a paris weekend so there'll be a lot more of that putting up on my website so definitely check out the photography section on there and there'll be more updates on pictures i've kind of been able to develop over the last couple of weeks be able to put up there and then i'll take you know take get some of the better ones out maybe a bit more um you know that that could be used as some sort of um decoration around the home and have them available as prints and stuff on my shop so definitely keep an eye out for that but you know check it out in general just in terms of keeping an eye on what i do and what i'm about and stuff um i was checking my site and also off the back of that obviously because it's all about me 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 and i also noticed that god damn it the djing thing for me has been slow dry and non-existent since things have kind of got back to normal which i kind of anticipated i kind of thought you know if people far bigger than me with far bigger followings and notoriety and whatever may be an experience were finding it difficult to get back on it and to maybe get back in the swing of things especially to the level that they were prior because i'd imagine like a lot of people i think people don't really keep this in mind but i think you know some people mention oh yeah if you're a dj or if you're a footballer you get paid a certain amount right so imagine if you're a dj i remember once being on a forum once a reddit forum or something or something i was on and i remember someone talking about fees and stuff and somebody said that they had uh, booked i think Masioplex. this was maybe when he was at his pomp let's say maybe 2017 maybe before even before that maybe 2014 right when Masioplex was it was everywhere and someone said something like oh he got paid in the bit against a big range but between the range of like 10 to 30 grand for a gig he played some festival date somewhere which was to me didn't make any sense like oh my god imagine getting paid 10 to 30 and i think at the time i was djing quite a lot also so i could only compare myself to him i'll be like hold on imagine getting paid 10 to 30 grand to play a gig like an hour and a half or two hours which is basically the same thing that i do so i it, it just couldn't i couldn't wrap my head around it but then obviously when you grow up and you get a little bit more experience in life you do your own thing you start to realize that you know all money is relative so just because he earns a certain amount doesn't mean he's just you know balling out of control at the time more 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 so than likely or more likely than not 
he's probably got a lifestyle or bills or responsibilities that would push whatever he makes to its brink to its real extreme so he might have two homes he might live in a really nice home he might put his kids in private school he might have retired his partner whatever right all these things are helping family out this is going to take huge chunks of money out of that so you're having to basically so i'd imagine a lot of the top djs are basically having to keep working just to keep the lights on even though they get paid really high amounts right in that regard and then, and then also there's the aspects i feel like in the dj world maybe out maybe with the exception of edm and tech house and maybe a few other places genres it's not really it's not really the done thing to basically flaunt your wealth the only way people can kind of know you have money is if they show your studio and you have all the equipment or you have all the you know you have a you know the latest cdjs and the latest dj mixer that's the only way people can kind of or the rotary mix even indoors that's the only way people really see your wealth but you don't really see djs posting their cars posting what they're wearing you know unless you're like a peggy girl or whatever they're quite humble so maybe there is a segment of people out there who are bathing and balling out of control and doing well but i'd imagine the majority of them are still having to tour just to keep the lights on even though they're making loads per gig so when i saw that i was like oof if they're struggling to get back on the hamster wheel then just imagine me right playing in bars and pubs around the local area that i was playing at for the most part it's going to be an absolute horror show because i pr correctly predicted that a lot of these places like again i'd be playing these places my whole my whole kind of approach to DJing, especially taking it in terms of a professional level, getting paid for it, was a little bit, you know, uh, was a little bit unconventional. The whole reason why I wanted to go to the approach that I was doing playing in local bars and pubs is because I wanted to actually perfect my ability to actually DJ and play for a crowd. How to basically get regular normies to stay and hear me play music, even though most of the things I'll be playing won't be stuff they'll be into. So my kind of attitude was to, okay, I'm going to go into this place. I'm not going to be a jukebox, but I'm going to be, I'm not going to be a human jukebox, but I'm going to be like a person. I'll be like, hey, I'll give you one and you give me two. I'll give you one, you give me three. I'll give you one, you give me two. Right? I kind of, I kind of earn your trust through the selection of tunes. And then maybe through that way, I'll be able to come like a little bit of a local legend. People will be able to maybe, you know, that kind of thing, that kind of weird idea. Because my, again, my kind of premise behind it was anyone, in my opinion, again, this is just me. I feel like anyone who's got good taste and who's got the technical proficiency to basically mix a song from track one to track two or from, sorry, from deck one to deck two can DJ in most clubs and most festivals. I think most people that go to these places are already smashed out of their faces, they're drunk, they're high, they're whatever. As long as you're able to make sure people stay on a dance floor and don't leave. So you're not, you know, if you go into a techno party, you know the last thing you should do is play tech is play break beats right because you're going to clear the dance floor don't play break beats don't play vocal house don't play hip-hop they're going to run away as long as you can stick to what people are playing in the space that you're in you're going to be fine so i was of the thinking what's the point of competing in the level of like playing at these warehouses where i was going in terms of hackney wig or in the air or in the quiz core places where most of these people aren't really that good when I, I'd, rather, I'd rather get good as a dj first and then get get good first playing in normie places and then use that to kind of shoehorn my way into like other places a bit of a backwards way what i should have done was done it was done both i should have went i should have done a two-pronged attack i should have done the normie thing and also attacked the kind of you know club circuit that i kind of go and party at because you still need to be able to play even though it's easy to do you still need to do it you know what i mean that kind of thing so i didn't do that messed up in that regard in big in a big way but it was still difficult to get back on the normie circuit because I was of the thinking, even, even when I played, I would always thought to myself like, why are these guys giving me 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 150 pounds, 200 pounds to play a set in these bars? When really, if they had somebody that could put together a pretty sick playlist, like a fresh one, maybe every week they refresh it, right? Or every two weeks, they have a really good playlist that can play sequence, not like a random one, you just random shuffle. An actual, maybe, no, a sequence playlist that can actually start well, that you can basically program for four or five hours so it can carry through the entirety of the night. If someone put for the banging place and they just paid them a hundred quid a month, this place could still be rocking the same way with a DJ. They don't really need a DJ to play in these places, especially some of these other pubs I played in, in like a Dawson sort of area that were quite quiet during some flyers were quiet if it wasn't a pay week or whatever, or people just didn't want to go out. So it, it didn't really make any sense for them to take money at the till and pay a Pacific guy to DJ, hire the equipment, all that stuff, if they could just bang on the Spotify playlist and do the thing. 
and then of course the pandemic hit you know people weren't really you know really booking people in that regard um, maybe the no, no the pandemic hit and then you know we had limitations and restrictions in terms of how people can go into this place blah 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 and i think these bars and pubs got a bit scrappy and got a bit resourceful and they figured out how to get good players they figured out how to play good mixes on their system and you know the rest was history and then since then those sort of opportunities have been few and far between for me in that regard so much so that i checked my flipping um ra flipping profile and from what i can see here again this is my ra profile pretty basic as you can see the list of places i played at you know you can tell most of my bars and stuff whatever even though i've been playing since 2010 well registered on here 2010 but i think first time i actually got behind a pair of decks might have been 2008 or something right so it's been a while um and again you know don't get me wrong i'm not pursuing it in the hopes of being the next ricardo Vera lobos like i've always said i want to be the person that's able to play like you know good what 36 odd sort of you know dates or so per year maybe no let's say 50 dates per year in like some of the best clubs in the world and be able to kind of like imagine being a resident at robert johnson a resident at flipping um uh what's it called a resident at club division there um you know these kind of seminal sort of places you know be able to pop in that fold twice a year four times a year maybe guest appearances here and there at fabric just kind of you know not too much just kind of casual stuff that would be i'll be more than happy with and then of course doing the stuff i'm doing but still it's concerning because the last event i legitimately got paid for to go and play again not counting my live streams was the 24th of july 2021 was the last time somebody said hey come to my bar would like you to play there or come to my venue come and play here's some money or cover your uber whatever just you know because i always say like the professional size when some sort of money is exchanged either it's to cover the uber or to pay you a fee it's 24th of july 2021 so in a few months it's coming up to a whole year since the last time i've been paid to play somewhere which is concerning for me but it also makes me think if i'm struggling like this it's hard to say i'm struggling because i haven't really been trying can you struggle if you're not trying i haven't really been trying to play i don't want not email because before when i was on it i'd be emailing clubs and stuff and playing you know consistently in different places which is why you know 2019 was a flipping mad one but still if i'm struggling to get gigs just imagine what the pe the person is like because i always say i always split the djing profession in like three tiers right abc and each tier has three different tiers in in it so maybe i'm like c3 so imagine if you're like c2 c1 they're probably struggling still it's like it's bleak out there i mean it's bleak out there um and especially in the uk we don't have you know residency culture isn't really a big thing it's starting to come up a little bit more because you know of course with the pandemic it limited the venues abilities to flying resident to flying guests which is the only reason why it wasn't like they started doing residencies because they felt like they could want to give back and build the, the scene and whatnot they don't care they just couldn't book you know ricardo seven times a year so they then decided to switch their approach but then again you know that's something that's got to get you know it's, it's something that's kind of people have to get used to still i feel like a lot of people still mostly go out to see a particular person play you know again i mentioned the other day that i'm a big fan of fold and i go there blindly a lot but i don't think a lot of punters do that to be honest i think a lot of punters book based on who's playing or maybe an area or maybe something whatever or maybe a date so to get them to go out blind and just trust the programming of a place and trust an unknown person myself is going to be difficult so you know it's just a mad one it really is but 20 2004 2001's a mad time until now and then since i've been paid to play somewhere and then in terms of not trying i would say i haven't tried mostly because i've been focusing on this obviously and obviously doing other things outside of djing that I thought would be more beneficial in terms of pushing my career forward but i feel like as per usual when it comes to me i always need to approach things like at the same time in order to kind of get momentum as soon as i start to kind of focus on one thing i would then end up losing track of or kind of neglect the other thing that i'm meant to be doing at the same time because i think even at the time when i was trying to get back on it again i was thinking of doing a live stream every week sort of like making it okay a quasi sort of club night which was my kind of um which you've got here listed here right the test mix i was meant to do that um every month at the end of the month do a test mix um 61 i still haven't recorded yet you know still in the flipping in the in the in the in deep space somewhere so 
I just got to get that level of consistency again. And I think that's something that I've kind of noticed in myself going forward um, in life in general. You know, as long as I'm consistent and I'm kind of turn up and show up, usually things work out. But I can't really be too upset that I haven't been getting booked in places because I haven't really been consistent in terms of doing this sort of stuff. So it makes sense that the universe isn't really providing me with chances to maybe showcase my skills in that regard going forward. But, you know, hopefully fingers crossed those things will change going forward but i just and i saw that myself and i was like oh my god man oh my god anyway moving track and moving on with the show am i the only person who's kind of feeling a little bit i won't say meh but especially because i've been going out quite often i find it hard i wouldn't say hard, yeah i find it hard to enjoy myself when i go out and i'm also finding i don't find it, i also feel not guilty but i feel somewhat conflicted when it comes to just being joyful every day because i'm you're generally a quite happy person i'm generally quite a half glass full type of dude but with with what's going on in ukraine at the moment you know with the invasion from russia and stuff and seeing footage of that in real time you know for the most part we're seeing it live um we're getting accounts from all over the place from different people from loads of different parts of ukraine different socioeconomic levels backgrounds colors creed whatever it may be we're seeing all perspectives basically beam to us through our phones whenever we want to see it and it's making me feel a little bit not guilty but yes I'm somewhat guilty that you know we're all kind of going we were kind of collectively going through a really tough time with the pandemic we kind of all collectively were coming out of it in some way shape or form right with the restrictions being relaxed and whatnot and then somehow out of nowhere a country that i was kind of exploring to go to i think that's probably another reason why i kind of feel it more because i was legitimately thinking of doing kiev instead of doing berlin again which i always do every year in terms of going Berkheim and stuff i was like okay cool let me switch up a little bit for this year and do kiev because i've been you know reading a lot about the techno scene there um reading obviously about the techno scene in places like georgia and tbilisi and stuff in copenhagen but ukraine was like my one place to go because I thought it's going to be a lot more different than places I've been to in terms of architecture, people and stuff. You know what I mean? Because I, I in my head, I was like, oh, Tbilisi or Georgian people look quite similar in the, in my head, weirdly, to people I've seen in Germany. So maybe just to kind of really change up and kind of flip the script a bit and refresh myself and actually try something new and go to an interesting place. Let's check out Kiev you know, because I've never been there before. I've got no, no, I've known no one there. I think Tbilisi, I've got a couple of friends who I can kind of reach out to and know people. So it's a bit more close to home and you know in the blink of an eye my um possibility of going there to just enjoy myself in terms of a hedonistic situation completely vanished and then it made me think straight away imagine me being bummed about that imagine people that are living there regularly like everyday life going to work in a bar going to i don't know t take their kids to school and then suddenly a flip of a switch you know their whole life has been completely upended and now these very same people have now turned into refugees they're now seeking asylum or seeking safety in countries that they would probably have never imagined they would be living in for the near future because how long is this going to last for you right if you decide to upend or if this war has caused you to take your entire life your entire family across a border to a neighboring country like a poland or whatnot there's no guarantee that this is going to be a one month thing a two month thing six month you know eight months a year this could be indefinite and now you have to completely what um, start a new life in a new country in a place that you never thought you'd be going to it's just bizarre and i think maybe seeing as well some of the negative reaction to it on social which i can understand why you know if you're somebody who's very so who's very um politically minded who um, cares about you know loads of these world issues going on at the same time yemen syria israel um somalia right you you are very in tune with the plight of people around the globe who are suffering it really is annoying to see how receptive um, the mainstream media has been to the plight of ukrainians because i guess for the most part they look like the majority of your people who basically present this mainstream news which makes complete sense in some regard and you know they have a similar way of life to what we have here in the uk and other parts of america i get it it's annoying i understand but just in general i just think in general considering what we've been through in the pandemic considering what's going through with this it just seems like you know non-stop catastrophes non-stop disruptions non-stop 
um, destabilization in terms of us, you know, just as we feel like we're about to start getting our bearings back and get back to some semblance of normality, something comes and reminds us that no, 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 we're not con in control of everything. Sorry, we're not in control of anything. And I think that's basically maybe the main point of it. No matter how much in control you feel you are, you're not. You're basically at the mercy of whatever happens. Um, and when it happens, it happens. And you have to just deal with the situation how you have to deal with it. Um, it's really, really mad. But I am finding myself, especially the other day when I went to fold, just sitting there and weirdly kind of, you know, again, maybe it's because I spent too much time on the war Ukraine report. Is it? Or Ukraine war report subreddit, right? That's, you know, I would have recommend checking it out before you go to bed, but I do. And I stay up too late reading and watching clips and stuff. Um, it kind of, you know, I was in a club the other day and I just, you know, randomly thought of a clip I saw, randomly heard Zelensky's voice in my head, randomly heard, you know, shelling and bombing and just random stuff just popped into my head. I just started getting a bit sad and thinking, man, like, look at me in this pedanistic club with this great sound system with people who have no care in the world and just are living in the moment in that precise moment having the time of their life yet yeah, here i am you haven't time of your life yet you know many thousands of miles away people that look just like you and i are struggling and don't know you know you know haven't seen their family you know because i remember seeing a clip of this like um grave that they put together where there was many many people who had been unidentified for unaccounted for which is really, really troubling and sad as well. It's just, it's just a shame all around, and it? it really is a really crying out shame. And I can only just imagine what it's like to go through day to day being an actual Ukrainian over there. I can only imagine. The only thing that brings me some semblance of um, solace, or you know, that kind of eases my worriness, has been the response in Europe. Seeing these videos and clips of people in Europe all over the place offering up, you know, homes and being the, you know, I've seen clips of people. In, kind of train stations in berlin meeting refugees who have nothing and welcoming their kids and people going up dressed as clowns and giving away free gifts and toys and chocolates and sweets just to kind of make their day just oh, you know sometimes you despair about humanity remember in the beginning of the pandemic you see all these crazy karen videos and people calling the police on people for dumb things and fights and stuff and then on the flip side you see you know when people are really struggling and need help for the most part, most human beings, you know, apart if you're, you know, except if you're flipping dark side feel or something, most people feel that selflessness comes out of them and they don't, you know, it doesn't matter if they got the last pound in their pocket, the last shirt on their back, they'll give it to you if it means they're going to be able to help you out. And it's great to see that response from our neighbor, from our former EU neighbors. Um, but yeah, man, it's been mad, it's been mad. Um, moving on to that, actually quite a crazy story about how mad it's been i'm sure some of you guys have seen this viral video sorry viral clip that went around from ukraine outside of the maternity hospital i think it was in mario poor mario poor i forgot how you pronounce the name of it of this lady on a stretcher that was pregnant holding her belly as she's being led out of the building that got bombed um obviously by russia and um I think at the time when the video, when the clip went viral, I remember seeing a couple of people on Twitter, especially women and stuff, who were basically pointing out to the fact that it was a good sign that she was holding her belly quite instinctively as she was being kind of stretched out. It kind of meant she was somewhat conscious. So there was hope that maybe she would be alive and stuff and be able to kind of give birth to the baby. But unfortunately, the update we've heard here, courtesy of BBC, is that the pregnant woman and the baby died after the hospital was shelled. And again, that was another kind of reason why it's been hard to kind of enjoy things and kind of be able to kind of um what you call it recapture whatever vibe we had in 2019 pre-pandemic you know things just don't get better with, like things only get worse before they get better that's basically what i'm trying to basically say with this and then i saw another report about um, large parts of china different provinces are now going back into lockdown because of rising cases it's just like god damn it man it never ends but yeah the article says as follows a pregnant woman wounded in a russian bombing of ukrainian maternity hospital has died along with her baby reports say um images showed her on the stretcher following the airstrike of mariupol 
um, the last Wednesday, which at least three other people were killed after the place. Um, after, sorry, after the place where she was meant to give birth was attacked, she was taken to another hospital. Her baby was born cesarean section, but showed no signs of life. The surgeon tumor told the Associated Press Agency the woman's pelvis bone had been crushed and her hip had been detached. This is the most horrible part of it. Medics said that they were trying to save her life. She realized she was losing her baby and shouted, kill me now. Can you imagine the pain that must go through a woman's body when she's unable to give birth to a baby that's alive or something, especially in this sort of situation? Like, can you imagine the pain and sorrow that you must be going through, especially when you think about, you know, because that's the thing that people don't remember or don't keep in mind. A lot of these people who are now becoming refugees, I'd imagine um, they're probably a huge majority, especially nowadays, who are leaving. They're getting, first of all, they're getting on trains where they have no idea where they're going or they're going to destinations where they have no family, you know. Um, then you're having to go there and restart your life. So you're already poor in the country that you're in. Because I remember checking out Kiev to go. For the most part, the way of life there was incredibly cheap. I remember I was checking bars and stuff to go to and I went to go there before. And I remember seeing this um, really decent place that served like burgers and beer, which is a great kind of estimate to see how much it's going to, how cheap life is in a certain place. And I'm pretty sure I remember seeing a place where they had like, you know, great kind of homemade style burgers where they actually got the you know they made they made the patty of the meat and shit and they had brioche buns and you know beer that was kind of you know trendy nice sort of beer and the whole entire meal with fries with a drink and all that good stuff was like three euros four euros or something like that so it's clearly a place where um you would imagine if you like on the somewhat the poverty line um, you don't really have the funds or the savings available for you to then relocate your entire family um, to a completely different country, especially if they have a higher cost of living. So you can only imagine all those things sort of playing in someone's mind, right? They're like, okay, cool. I'm going through all this struggle, all this strife, this war in my country, but at least I have this ray of sunshine, you know, that's kind of growing inside of me, this innocent baby that's going to be able to somewhat give me some semblance of um, happiness through this dark time. And then you try to give birth and then that baby is unfortunately um, not alive. You probably do want to kill yourself. You probably do want to die. There's no point of living because your actual reality outside of that pregnancy is bleak. Um, I can only imagine the pain. Literally can only imagine. When it became clear that the child was stillborn, they tried to resuscitate the mother but realized after 30 minutes that it was hopeless. And I remember someone saying the same thing about, um, I forgot who, maybe, maybe it was like Ralphie May or I forgot it was some sort of comedian the first time i heard of the phrase dying of a broken heart i think this comedian was basically um you know i think they ended up breaking up with their partner or something and ended up kind of going through a bit of a downward depression spiral which effectively led to them kind of passing away even though they had health complications anyway beforehand they said the ultimate thing that kind of still the deal was the broken heart thing and i think they you see that a lot happening with like older couples when they're really really close and they end up dying within like a short period they end up dying within like a um, close period of time that happens quite often so i can only imagine that can be one of the things but one good story to come out of that has been the other lady which was the influencer blogger type lady called um mariana veshi gurskaya um who has successfully given birth to her child i remember this image going kind of viral seeing this kind of bloodied girl walking down the steps of a building that's clearly been bombed um heavily heavily pregnant um, and she obviously um, luckily happily god's grace was able to go give birth to her baby um don't know if it's a old daughter here you see here maybe the partner holding it so yeah great to see in that regard so anyway man i, I don't know i sorry to start the show like this but i've been thinking about it a lot it's been hard to get out of my mind i think more, a lot of you probably been feeling the same way and for myself if someone's been actually going out and trying to live a somewhat normal life especially in the uk we're kind of back to some semblance of normality you know um most restrictions are basically gone um there was even a tweet i saw recently about british airways saying that they're going to um take away the mandatory need to have like um face masks and stuff so we're back to some semblance of normality and still stuff like this is impacting um myself and my ability to live a normal life because i'm like why do i get to live a normal life and these people don't you know especially given the circumstances that we've all collectively gone through um why do i get the opportunity to go out and do what i want but these people don't get the opportunity to do so it really is completely unfair but i guess that's kind of one of the 
parts of life where you have to kind of put up with in it i guess is what we have to put up with um moving on from that yeah let's talk about this so this is courtesy of the cut this is an article called a vibe shit is coming will any of us survive it and all in all it's basically what i've been talking about at the start of the show in terms of trying to understand understand and anticipate whether or not whatever vibe we had pre-pandemic will ever come back again for the most part it won't for the most part let's just kind of call a spade a spade whatever vibe that will be restored that that will kind of come back into prominence will be a different sort of vibe um i think it's going to be a vibe that is kind of is somewhat um is somewhat how would you say it's somewhat determined on the people who are around i feel like for the most part in terms of nightlife going out hospitality scene i've definitely seen a decrease in people out and about i've definitely seen a changing of the guard in terms of who is about and doing the doing the thing and who's the movers and shakers and whatnot that are out there i've seen a lot of people move on to other things in terms of their life and what they want to do so clearly that's going to impact the vibe and whatnot and i think overall my overall kind of conclusion on these sort of things is i feel like the obviously the pandemic has kind of aged us all aggressively i feel like we've all aged more in the last two years than we have done maybe in the last five but i also think that you should embrace it and i also think if you are somebody who's kind of maybe decided to go a different direction in your life in terms of you know maybe pulling away from the scene and pulling away from all that sort of debauchery and going out and all that sort of stuff i think you should embrace it and just live with the reality that your time has come and gone it's completely okay and i think this article from what i can ascertain from it um it feels like a writer or a person who hasn't kind of come to the realization or the acceptance that their time has been and gone and whatever vibe that did exist pre-pandemic is not going to be there again post because the people have changed circumstances have changed and life has just moved on it just is what it is but let's just quickly read the article and then i'll kind of continue on it says one morning in june while i was puffing away on my stationary bike firing a peloton pretending i had enough time to get my body ready for the hot slack summer that never really was my friend ella messaged me okay please let me know if this person is dumb but this person does what this stressed me out this morning she dropped a link to something called vibe shift an entry from the subset called eight ball which turned out to be a weekly newsletter of a trend forecasting consultancy by sean M M M mononen Mononen, Mon Mon Monona. How do you say that name? How, why can't I say that? Sean Monahan. Um, previously, Monahan, um, Monahan, right? Yeah, had helped to found the now defunct art collective K Hole, known for their giving a name to 2010 phenomenon of the Norm Core and succinctly explaining why all the um all of a sudden everyone was wearing New Balance sneakers and dad jeans. In other words, he's someone who has made a career of translating cultural trends for a large audience. A vibe shit is a catchy but sort of too cool for term um for Monaghan uses for a relatively simple idea. In the culture sometimes things change and once dominant social wavelength starts to feel dated monahan who's 35 breaks down the free vibe shift um he has survived as observed he has survived and observed the following hipster slash indie music circa 2003 to 2009 or peak arcade fire block party highways to cheap mondays williamsburg bespoke cocktail bars post internet techno yeah which i was there for i actually remember that was the that hipster indie music era of 2003 and 2009 was actually the first time i went to new york with my group of friends that i was um close to back then um that was our first sort of like lads holiday too which is a crazy lads holiday to go to right especially if being a, a a british guy usually your lads holidays are somewhere outside of london or whatever town you're from or they're in europe somewhere mostly portugal spain italy france those kind of neighboring countries right that's usually where you go you don't usually get on a 10-hour flight on a virgin to new york as your first boy's holiday but i can't complain it was absolutely banging um and then post-internet techno revival which was circa 2010 2016 or the blood orange era norm core dressing like the matrix kim folk at the club not kim for the magazine exactly i remember that era again i remember seeing that was the area i actually saw blood orange for the first time live and i think that might have been in the alibi actually dev Hines's new moniker that might be in the alibi i saw him live performing for the first time and then the last um uh 
the last trend he saw was hype beast work which was 2016 to 2020 which was drake at his drakeist the nike sneakers app nick sneaker flipping virtue signaling don't drive and protest not brunch you can argue that the accuracy of Monaghan's timeline or spend hours over dinner litigating the touch points of each vibe era is kind of fun debating which trends are peaking and which are just um, for white people. But the thing that struck fear into Ellen's heart was Monaghan's prediction that we were on the cusp of a new vibe shift. It is unnerving because when you really consider it, you can feel people flock into a new thing. You can see that it's right something has shifted none of this would have practically be distressing it's just how time moves on if not for this paragraph explaining what the flocking looks like one day everyone was wearing red wing boots partying in warehouses in williamsburg decorated with twilight with twinkling very lights vibe shift everyone started wearing new nike freeze and sweating out in the club now some did not make it through the vibe shift why are you all wearing the same sneakers they would plead don't you care about authenticity? That's with all the sudden interest in the branding. This to say, not everyone survives a vibe shift. The ones still clinging on for authenticity, fairy lights, and the ones who crystallize in their hips of them while the culture moved on. They bunkered down in Greenpoint and got married or took their wax beards and their nautical tattoos and sleeves and relocated to Hudson. By And by that law, those who survived this shift only to get stuck in, say, high beast work, well, they already moved to Los Angeles to houses that have room to display their sneaker collections worth a small fortune. Unfortunately, I ate this social analysis up like a big owl spoon. Sorry, a big owl spoon. It's chilling to realize that you may be on the, you may be, you may be the one of, of the stuck, or if you aren't, you may be soon. Like Ellen, I've totally stopped thinking about my own survival odds since. I've never actually thought about it that way, in my opinion. I've kind of always thought. I've always kind of had the perspective of enjoying whatever era or phase I was in in that given time. Maybe it comes from the fact that I was never really allowed to do stuff when I was younger or living at home. So the fact that I was able to move out and do my own thing, I don't take it for granted. I kind of enjoy and savor each moment and just kind of try and live with it and enjoy it for the best I can. And whatever next phase comes, it's probably going to be my best best phase because I'll be able to make more money. I'm more smarter. I've got better friends. I've learned more things. I'm more worldly. You know, all those sort of things. I would imagine that would be the case. Um, but I guess for some people, if you're kind of eternally obsessed with remaining the coolest and the hippest and part of the zeitgeist, you're constantly going to be chasing the dragon. And I feel like the moment you let go of that stuff usually is when you become your coolest, especially I feel like anyway, the person that kind of pretends and kind of acts like it and chases it too much is never the coolest. They're usually the lamest person in the room, the one that's sort of laid back and kind of allowing life to kind of well, not say come at them, but sort of like taking it in a stride usually to me are the coolest people that exist out there. And I think for the most part, the sooner you're able to realize that and let go, the better. And I've kind of adopted this thing, especially when I go to these kind of newer, trendier, cooler parties with young kids. I tend to kind of like if if it's kind of like in a physical manifestation way, I tend to kind of always hang out on the outskirts of the club so i won't be in the middle i won't be in the front i'll just be over to the side do my own thing because again when i go to these places i'm not going to apart from maybe making the odd instagram friend here and there i'm not going to hook up i'm not going to do anything crazy i'm just going to go and enjoy the music so i basically stand on the side enjoy myself have my drink do my thing if i want to take a bump i go in the toilet i do my whatever i need to do but i don't allow the situation i don't allow the fact that i'm seeing so many cool amazing hot young people around me to maybe feel bad about myself i just accept that this is their time and i'm basically a guest in their space they're allowing me to share their space with them and the last thing i want to do is be the old cokey guy in the corner trying to get cool and down with the kids because it's going to look off because i'm clearly not one of the kids and the sooner the, the sooner i realize that the more fun i was able to have don't get me wrong i've always had a good time when i go out I'm somebody that can clearly, you know, entertain himself, but I feel like that kind of acceptance that my time in that way, in terms of that being the, the zenith of the coolest, has been and gone cool, but it's also one of the most important times of my life because it allowed me to be the person I am now. Without it, I wouldn't be here now. So I don't really see it as a bad thing personally. And for the most part, this article keeps rambling on about being what is me in that regard. We'll go to the bottom in terms of the last paragraph. Um, it says here, duh, duh, duh. Uh, yes, it's here. Um, 
um, I decided to poll my friends about what they're doing, mostly the ones about kids. Do they think that they will emerge on the other side of all this as adults in terms of the pandemic who just accept uh, we lost our last few years of social acceptable freedom or will they let themselves get stuck? I'm writing about a vibe shift I wrote in a text one friend broaching the topic. Are they good or bad? I can't keep up, he replies. He also doesn't really care and he just got engaged and has really gone and has, and has been and is, sorry and has been going on vacations and calls himself vibe optimistic. He changes for no vibe, which is something that I would definitely prescribe to. It continues. Is this about babies? Do you want to have a baby? Asks another friend of mine who just had a baby and wants company and refuses to understand that this is about vibes. I could just opt out. But here's a glimpse of what awaits me if I survive. Late last summer, Monaghan was in LA hanging out with this kind of trendy wine bar called El Prado, where he observed a 21-year-old woman wearing rocket dogs, as in platform shoes with low-rise boot-cut religion jeans. He noticed how she had a little back lever under the arm purse and a cami and a trucker hat. It was as though she had a time traveled from early aughts, Kitson. We watched as she started talking as an older hips to an older hipster dude. He was trying to explain to her what a mosh pit was and my friend was just kind of cracking up about this weird intergenerational conversation happening when we were like this girl looks like she just shifted from I don't know 2008 to this bar and that taking uh, talking to a guy who looks like he's never updated his style since 2008 and he's trying to give her a more of a POV on the crowd surfing of a hardcore show and all as Monahan says laughing incredulously. And I think that to me is the saddest part of it, like trying to compete and trying to still be in there, like being that guy trying to hook up with that girl that looks like she's from 2008. It doesn't make any sense. Play with your age mates. Obviously, keep yourself fresh by kind of, you know, making sure you're aware of what's going on out there and dipping your toes in here and there and checking things out. But this constant need to be the coolest person in the room as you progress in your age or in life in general with your experiences is lame as hell i feel like allowing life to basically take you on different journeys is actually really beneficial so if you are somebody that's basically seen obsessed and you happen to happen to stumble across a silent retreat a farm a hospice a care home and it takes you in a completely different direction in terms of career take it and go head first in it don't hold on to the fact that oh maybe i'm missing out on this and missing out on that i don't think that's generally the right way to go about things life is there for living especially during the pandemic we all have noticed how much time we've wasted why would you want to waste more time trying to be cool in a world where cool isn't really a currency who cares about being cool everyone that you look at nowadays in culture with maybe the exception of kanye and even him i would argue isn't the coolest guy in the world they are the opposite of cool the kardashians not really cool like people you know whatever whoever you look at on culture no, no one is cool everyone just does what they do they do to a very levels of success they play to their audience and they just keep it moving that is it but this idea of coolness and vibe and whatever it is like it doesn't exist in my opinion it really doesn't nowadays it's a completely whole different thing even the vibe thing is not a video thing i don't even think in general i don't think kids care about that they just go to where people that look like them hang out and just kind of keep it trucking i think for the most part but maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong moving on from that we should we should talk about briefly actually the absolutely brilliant or inspiring Balenciaga 422 ready to wear collection that debuted obviously during Paris Fashion Week that I didn't have a chance to basically update on the podcast but hey let's talk about it now um first things first it's actually disappointing that we don't get a clearer image of the of the garments because of how striking and sort of like moving the actual show was in terms of the setup of the snow and you know the models walking through somewhat wind and struggling and basically carrying all their belongings in these sort of like bin bag sort of stuff which basically would kind of you know um elicit some images and thoughts or memories of people you know suffering off the back of this um ukraine sorry the, the russian invasion of ukraine um and obviously demn has got his experience of it as well being a refugee himself and having to flee the war in his country so there was obviously a lot of emotion to it but i feel like the clothes themselves we didn't get a chance to see it because of all the theatrics around it and of course the theatrics around it for whatever reason caused a lot of debate on social people are thinking that oh Demna can't talk about certain things and it feels like he's cheapening what's happening and he's making it all about himself and I don't necessarily get it I really don't because if I don't understand this idea people have that you can't 
sort of speak i think it kind of goes back to what we saw with kardashian it, it's sort of similar to what's going on with kim with a whole variety magazine interview right where she's saying she's talking about hard work of course her statement or point of view is sort of somewhat tone deaf but there needs to be room for people who come from wealth or whatever privileged positions or whatever it may be who are can able to speak about their their situation or their story as it relates to what's going on in culture without being labeled somebody who's trying to basically sponge of what's going on or take the shine away whatever it may be right like them they should feel free to share his story um that kind of relates to what's going on with ukraine and russia without people making it seem as if it's some sort of duplicitous sort of like crazy thing that he's doing in my opinion but again what do i know the notes itself kind of you know outlines his thoughts and a, a, a inspiration behind the show i quick can read it it says as follows the war in ukraine has triggered the pain of a past trauma i carried in me since 1993 when the same thing happened to my home country and i became a forever refugee forever because that's something that stays in you the fear the desperation the realization that no one wants you but i also realized what really matters in life the most important things like life itself and human love and compassion this is why working on this show this week was so incredibly hard for me because in the time of fashion because in times like this sorry fashion loses its relevance and its actual right to exist fashion week feels like some kind of absurdity i thought for a moment about canceling the show that i and the team worked hard on and were all looking forward to but then i realized that canceling this show would mean giving in and surrendering to the evil that's already hurt me for so much for that has really hurt me so much for almost 30 years i decided i can no longer sacrifice parts of me to that senseless heartless war of ego this show needs no explanation it's dedication to fearlessness to resistance and to the victory of love and peace and on everyone's seat at the show itself there was a oversized t-shirt in the colors of the ukrainian flag that looked absolutely sick that people were kind of proudly wearing after the fact but unfortunately we didn't really get a chance to see the actual garments because of all the sleet and snow that was there we got to see fragments of it here and there some good shapes and maybe it kind of lends back to this maybe the whole premise of it is this actually thinking about it now because balenciaga has got a particular there's a particular sort of um there's a particular sort of shape silhouette texture whatever it may be when it comes to balenciaga right similar with like rick owens so do you really need to see the details to kind of get an understanding of what they're trying to present probably not because we've seen some kind of iteration of it in previous collections like a good example are these glasses right we've seen this iteration of glasses in the previous season that people are now wearing nowadays so it's hard to basically be too critical of them in that regard but it would have been nice to have the option to see far more clearer images because unfortunately we don't really get much of it and for whatever reason he decided to do a lot of this show in kind of black so a lot of the looks there weren't meant much color in it kind of reminded me of the other show where he did where it was kind of in water um i've also read conflicting reports that allegedly this show was basically based on climate change and then the setting was the same so kind of repurposing it to fit with the kind of migrant or you know, refugee crisis going on at the moment in ukraine has was easy to do in terms of kind of pivoting it away because obviously the show was planned months and months and months ahead of time before whatever happened in ukraine happened but still it resonates you know seeing these frail models walking with only a bag full of belongings some of them with no belongings through the snow um struggling to stand stay up and walk upright was still triggering i think a lot of people mentioned how it was very moving at the time being there seeing it all play out in real time and of course if you unless you've unless you don't have a heart or a conscious it's difficult to go to a fashion week be carted around in an in an uber um be taken to fancy dinners and you know see the the high life over there and not think about how privileged and or not not feel not think about how privileged you are how fortunate you are and also have some sort of sense of guilt and shame that you're enjoying this number of people are struggling you know not too far from you but of course in times like these this is where sort of the power i guess of fashion and the moving image and creativity and artistry and whatnot and innovation play some role because it allows you to somewhat disconnect from the horrors of everyday life it can also serve as a kind of jumping off point maybe to get you interested to maybe help out donate whatever it may be and it also sends a message of somewhat hope resilience and whatnot for people who are actually out there and maybe following some of these shows you never know um it's a little bit try it's a little bit 
every fairy and wafty I know, but I do get where he's coming from. Is it? I, am I making excuses for Demna because I'm a Balenciaga fanboy and I love Lev Vetema? Of course. Am I somewhat right? Maybe. But you get the point. You get the point. So yeah, some good looks in there. Again, like I said, um, there's a lot of detail that we're missing because of obviously the effects that went on in the show. That's obviously a bit of a disappointment and a shame because I think there's a lot of great things I would like to see a lot more closer. Um, obviously, there's a highlight of the bag because I guess that bag is going to be somewhat popular, especially the shape of glasses that Bella's wearing. People are going to be absolutely over the moon for it. Um, but there's many things here that I would love to see up close that I don't really get to see because unfortunately the show and the sleet and the fake effect of the snow and whatnot and the wind um, kind of distorted it. So that's the only problem I have with it, to be completely honest. But there are some indications of what the looks look like in the actual of the on the actual instagram page actually you got some details here obviously showing the bag and the shoes here from the looks you got the tape look that kim kardashian was wearing i wonder if this was just like a look for the show basically i think some of you have seen it where kim was wearing like a full kind of bodysuit thing and then some of the assistants at balenciaga were sitting down taping balenciaga tape you know in the style of caution tape around her i wonder if this is going to be made into a garment that's printed to look like tape or if this is something that's going to be part of the or if this is going to be a service they provide this i don't know whether or not they tape you up in the store i don't think that's going to be that doesn't really sound actually too believable but yeah some some detail here we've got this triple x hoodie Sorry, with these um half and half jean sweatpant things going on there um obviously three pictures at the same time maybe that was uploaded incorrectly but there are some details here and there we've got a detail of some sort of sneaker with holes in them that's now maybe an update on some sneakers done prior we got some jewelry pieces here some color but we don't really see a lot of detail in this collection unfortunately we see here demna talking oh no we see a uh, article here courtesy of brute america uh let's play a bit of sound is here <laughs> Mon histoire personnelle euh, vient de la guerre aussi, de la même guerre. Hein. Mais il y a... Oh shit, il parle français. Mais le problème de, une fois avec la guerre, ça reste en nous en fait. Ça part jamais vraiment. Il y a 30 ans, j'étais par terre quelque part. Et là aujourd'hui, je fais ce défilé à Paris. C'est un chemin de survie quand même. Et... I'm, su yeah, yeah, you, you got I'm, su I'm surprised people are really annoyed by this anyway when it comes to them because he's been talking about his um story you know of basically fleeing georgia for a while it's part is basically part of the arc or part of the narrative that he kind of puts out whenever he's talking about himself and his work like it's been a constant thing so i'm very surprised this has been something people kind of got annoyed about but yeah the show invite as well was really sick it was these kind of cracked iphones uh, brick iphones with the invite and the date and the name attached sorry the address engraved on the back that people were saying some people were selling them i saw someone selling them on grailed but again unfortunately we can't see any detail of the show itself but from what we can see of what i can see it obviously was great i wouldn't say anything else different because i'm a demna fanboy unashamedly so um these sort of alien -y type glasses are going to be all over the place and they're really cool looking man um yeah really big fan of the whole thing cannot wait to see more obviously going forward next we move on to um these balenciaga crocs that i want so desperately um the balenciaga hard crocs have dropped i think most of you have seen them um courtesy of asap nas obviously wearing them recently not really a fan of the, the outfit maybe i'm a fan of the leather jacket which is i guess better no it's balenciaga from a couple seasons back if i'm not mistaken with the tassels and stuff on them really cool looking it reminds me of like a the good thing I like about Balenciaga, right, which I've always liked about them now, even when he started at Vetmar, was the fact that a lot of the looks, a lot of the inspiration, a lot of the fits, a lot of the silhouettes reminded me of what I saw when I went to Berlin for the first time, especially the early, the, the, the first couple of years, maybe that was, what, 2014 or something, right, when it wasn't as bait as it was now, and you could go to vintage shops and pick up crazy stuff for cheap. I still regret, I remember buying this crazy ski jacket that was really warm and amazing shape on it, and I lost it, right, somewhere. I think I must have left it at flipping CC Foss or something like that, right? But what I like about Demna and the looks he, he, would, he will do or the the collections you put together at Vetemont de Balenciaga was the fact that a lot of it was inspired by stuff I'd seen at vintage shops or thrift stores or people walking around the, around town and there's a lot of it was you know stuff that you could you could replicate 
the looks with like stuff that you have already in your wardrobe because you know cleverly especially at the beginning when lots lo lots of volkova was there you know styling they just were a dream team and you can always kind of replicate the looks with your own wardrobe and it'll be oh shit I, i've got that kind of trench jacket i didn't know you wear it that way and cool so that's a great thing about it so you can always find different things to fit it but there are certain pieces that you just need to complete the look and you know i'm a big fan of new york boots i've been wearing mine daily for the longest time i've got them over there i don't want to pull them out but you know i wear new york boots all the time i'm always wearing big stacky dog boots and whatnot and i just feel like these crocs are kind of an extension of the boots i already wear day to day they can be far lighter because they're crocs but they still have that kind of aggressive um you know um metal sort of look that i like when i'm kind of dressing up and going out and doing my thing around town and of course being somebody that owned a pair of triple s's and whatnot you know i'm a big fan of the aggressive soul chunky soul kind of approach kind of clunky unnecessarily so um shoe and i would really really want to get a pair of these really want to get a pair. obviously i would wear them maybe a way different to what asap nice is wearing them maybe with the same shades i've actually have coming in soon actually but the crocs themselves are absolutely banging um Place like a spring summer carpet, runway show, da, 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 da. as seen on the feet of Elliot Page, the pair takes um, the Crocs, hard Crocs silhouette and applies a grungy, elevated aesthetic designed by Demna. The result is a frankly unlike anything Crocs has ever pulled off by itself in collaboration before. A 110mm platform is complemented by the what 10 millimeter arch creating a linear sorry creating a linear tower of crocs vibe while studs some of which balenciaga branded adorn the soul unit i wonder if the studs are plastic or they're metal i wonder did he go plastic or metal i'm also interested it's also curious to me that in this article they specific they specifically mention demner's name in terms of designing them they don't usually do that a lot with um you know luxury brands footwear because it could be a whole host of people designing some stuff right because i always say um, Hedy Slimane should be credited for basically re-energizing or making basically Chelsea boots trendy again right because of the uh, SLP wire boot but you don't really see a lot of articles of people saying Hedy Slimane designed the wire boot you don't really get them they just say the SLP designed wire boot so I wonder if this is like a purposeful thing that the PR at Balenciaga have done to say hey everything that comes out on that runway is touched under the Balenciaga moniker is touched by Demner's hand directly like he's responsible for everything that comes out on that look on that runway or he has a final say so or something because it's very peculiar to mention his name there but um I wonder if the detailing is actually metal if it's plastic I'm not really too sure if it's metal that'll be absolutely cool if it's not I don't really give a shit but I definitely want them definitely gonna be my next purchase in terms of a next luxury brand shoe type thing I was considering getting the the waterproof boots that kanye has been wearing so i'll probably end up still getting them um and still the bottega veneta puddle boots that i still haven't got a chance to purchase yet um so those are still on the list but in terms of the here and now in terms of fitting my vibe and what i want to wear these are definitely up in my alley definitely up in my alley so be on the lookout for me out and about in them streets would i go in a club in these probably i would yeah i would i'm thinking right now i would go in a club in these maybe with a pair of rick Owen shorts or something you know um it would look pretty decent i think in that regard too or some slasher denim right they've got those denim pants that they got at the moment blinds yoga where they're slashed and they've got like a track pant underneath that might be actually a good look to wear something like this in or maybe just go completely formal and wear like a suit um you know uh, a really baggy suit with these on as well that might be a good look like a double breasted suit jacket big pants that might actually vibe with it. i don't really know I, there's some looks i've got in my head anyway that i'm gonna probably spec out and get on top of but yeah if you see me stomping around the streets in them talk to me nice talk to me nice um next on list this is a random one and something maybe a lot of people won't really care about but it feels like to me travis scott and his team have been given some sort of indication that whatever court case they're going through in terms of the Asher World travesty or tragedy, sorry, um, that Travis isn't going to be directly impacted by it. He's not going to serve any jail time. He probably won't have to pay that much of a fine. And maybe the blame will be solely put at the feet of like Live Nation or somebody else or maybe the local police department. I've got the feeling that's going to happen. And why do you say that? 
because of the recent news that's been you know spread on social so the first bit of news it was as follows it says travis scott announces new event safety initiative in response to the ashland war tragedy right and it says travis scott announced a new initiative called project hill following the november the 5th tragedy at the 2021 ashland world festival billed as a multi-tier long-term series of community focused philanthropy and investment efforts the initiative is broken into four categories the wayman webster hs page sorry the wayman web a HBC Youth Scholarship Fund, an expansion of the Cactus Youth Design Center, free mental health resources, and a U.S. Conference of Mayors Task Force of Event Safety. Project Hill is backed by a multi-million dollar funding commitment from Scott, with a portion of the proceeds from his up-and-coming product launches also going towards the initiative. Build reports. Over the past months, I've been taking the time and space again to grieve and reflect and to do my part to heal my community. No, you haven't. Um, most importantly, I want to use my resources and platform moving forward towards actionable change. My team and I created a project, my team and I created a project to heal, um, to project heal so to take much needed action towards supporting real solutions that make all events the safest spaces they can possibly be. I will always honor the victims of the Asher World tragedy who remain in my heart forever. No, they don't. Giving back and creating opportunities for the youth is something I've always done and will continue to do as long as I have the chance. This program will be a catalyst to real change and I can't wait to introduce the rest of the technology and the ideas we've been working on at my album. That's the most important thing. I think to me it's all capital bullshit because obviously we saw action speak louder than words when the actual tragedy happened. He was pushing to perform in places. He wanted to go out again. And obviously the reception from the public and whatnot wasn't the greatest. The festivals and whatnot were dropping him before he decided to pull out from them, which again, indication to me that he felt like he didn't do anything wrong. Did he do anything wrong or not? Who knows? But in terms of actually feeling guilty and feeling somewhat responsible for it, I don't think he feels responsible for it in the slightest. And I think for the most part, what I argued before, I think Travis Scott, because he's, got you know he's probably one of the only people in hip-hop i can think of with the exception of maybe kendrick lamar who has got a clean-cut image where he can they can put his face to nearly everything and it would sell and it won't be any problem in terms of cancellations and finding out clips of him saying you know calling people faggots or calling people retards or whatever it's not gonna happen right he's clean-cut and i think because of that he makes a lot of people a lot of money a lot of people a lot of money and because he puts on a hell of a live show you know every live show is like a um a signal boost and an advertisement for other things that he wants to do continually continually because of that those same people will not let a cash cow like him die away or die out or you know disappear it's not going to happen he's responsible for people's private school educations he pays people's car notes and mortgages and whatnot people need travis scott so it was it was evident to me that they were going to do whatever it took to make sure that he was not responsible for the tragedy and that he would be able to get away with it scot-free and then i think this is part of the sort of um, repairing the court of public opinion around him because for the most part if he's found not guilty or not responsible in the court of law it doesn't matter what he does with this stuff he could just continue performing and no one will care because he's able to do so but i think in terms of repairing his somewhat um safe public image this is a step in the right direction right by making it look like you give a shit make it look like you care make it look like it's really tearing you apart and you want to use this moment as a teachable moment to change everything going forward to help everybody die blah 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 which is not the case and then so this is one thing which i thought was evidence of it and then the second thing which i thought was evidence that clearly he's been given good news was the fact that he posted this weird video of himself just smiling you know it's, i guess maybe the the light hit his face well and he felt buff or something but this to me led me to believe that definitely travis has been told behind the scenes that everything's going to be all right that he's going to be completely fine he's going to be not responsible he's going to be back performing at these venues and at these festivals where they clearly said he couldn't perform because they didn't want a negative backlash um he's going to feel completely fine with it in my opinion i think so maybe i'm reading into it wrong and people think otherwise but i'd love to hear your thoughts do you think he will get away with this scot-free no pun intended i do if you do not leave me let me know in the comments down below let me know in the comments down below okay moving on for that one 
now we've got oh yeah we've got this quickly i want to talk about this is Kurt of hype beast news from a couple of days ago actually regarding a pair of clark's original wallaby boots now i'm a big fan of these wallaby boots just a shame the collaboration itself is with hidden that wanky instagram page that no one should really pay attention to because they keep regurgitating the same old nonsense again and again and again and they essentially you know uh, don't want to say take advantage of their audience but it's just a shit page not for me not really for me in it maybe because i lived it and i breathed it and i know all this stuff already maybe i'm at advantage that way but in general i think it's crap but they're still able i feel like put out some great products i feel like this is a great product minus obviously the shitty logo on the back and i'm hoping that this clark wallaby boot is gonna come out anyway i'm hoping this is just clark's way to introduce this model to the market hopefully garner some great reception from it and then make it a somewhat gr in the future because the actual shape of it reminds me of the old school um, wallabies that nigo used to wear back in the day when you suppose in the magazines i have called asana and boone and whatnot back in the day and it also reminded me of stuff that he's done himself with Bape itself, right? Where he's taken a Clark Wallaby and basically, you know, um, made his spin on it when it comes to creating stuff under the kind of Bape star or Bape moniker. But I think the shape of these is absolutely fantastic. It's probably vulcanized, I'd imagine. So maybe the sole looks like it's really chunky, like this is going to be a bit raised compared to a normal Wallaby. But I'd imagine they're probably not. Maybe the insole kind of sits down here somewhere. So it ends up just sitting like a normal Wallaby. But I do like the look of them i do like the fact that they've got this really flat and aggressive front toe bit here um i maybe would have been nitpicky i would say i would like the front of it to be a lot more flatter if that was possible but i still like the shape of it i'm a big fan of the kind of chucker under the ankle shape anyway um i've always kind of said i don't know why these days vans for whatever reason when it comes to collaborations they don't really give people the choice of making chuckers anymore it's always um old schools eras skate highs and half cabs no one really does chuckers anymore at all but i feel like that chucker shape is definitely a versatile shape that is i feel like underrepresented nowadays especially considering what people wear i think chuckers look way better with like combats and like um shorts and big pants like they look amazing i feel like in that kind of stuff no one now no one nowadays is wearing skinny jeans right that much you know unless you're tucking your shoes your your jeans into your boots like i do and stuff or whatever or you're wearing absolutely gigantic boots you don't really wear skinny jeans people are wearing really wide bellowing pants and stuff i feel like this stuff is perfect for it and you can wear them with socks you know hiking socks you can wear them without socks ankle socks they're versatile in that regard but i hope they come out sans the hidden you know collab hope they come out in nice colorways too um this sort of plush suede going forward as well i really do let's see some of the article where they said here the anonymous run who okay we don't care about that um taking the class will be boo the serves up three colorways in maple cobalt and green each pair sports a color the the classic color embossed branding that hits the trio um of the hang tags that does appear you can look at it very closely typically the materials used are softer and smoother suede on the flip side okay when are they meant to come out they came out already right they came out on march 8th it's priced at 138 let's see if they're still available there let's see what good is saying about these um clark wallabies i'd imagine they've probably gone in it if they're going to be a collab with that instagram page they nearly got a million followers already jesus christos let's see if they got them down here it's just past ones right it's up and coming up and coming see if they got past ones no okay let's see if they got let's just go and go to the see let's just write this and see if they got them on there let's see if this is a thing hidden come on good hood no men's men's home let's see if this gives me the thing cool boom let's search let's see if they got them available free results should be the shoes it looks like come on brother where are you no images Hmm. okay there we go cool okay we got them there they showed up so yeah they're probably gone already right the glisses look at the green probably all sold out i'm assuming yeah sold out okay this uk 10 still available oh they look a bit shit there and in the product page compared to that image here right or am i bugging out and they look way better here than they do there oof 
power, the power of an image. I wonder if they brush these. Do you reckon they brush this with a suede brush to make them look fluffy and stuff? And then these are just what? Or maybe that's a sample pair. Oh man, that's a shame if that's true, isn't it? I guess if you wanted to, if I was being picky, I could just color over that or just scratch it off. It wouldn't be an issue. Um, but I wouldn't want to be showing that. You know, it's like it's bad enough when you see those guys wearing hidden socks and stuff. It's proper lame. It's like wearing a weed sock, isn't it? Like, it's not the vibe at all. But yeah, this uh, uh, surprisingly, it's still available. I guess because it's not like a hype Nike or release or whatnot. Maybe because they did a little bit of size run. Only like a 7 to 11. That's not really, a, you know, peak sizes. But 130, not too shabby in terms of pricing. Do they have them on the insoles branding again? Jesus Christ. Well, everywhere, isn't it? I guess it's not too shabby, but I do like them compared to the regular Wallabies shape wise it probably sh suit my wide foot a lot more than um regular wallabies do even though i used to wear these all the time to school and stuff but yeah they look pretty decent in it i can't front look at that picture there on the, on the top that's what it's gonna look like you know imagine these are a pair of chinos some white jeans some white pants imagine the pants they sell at places like angland and stuff with a pair of these like they look fucking phenomenal i mean guppy made and stuff pants that like, come on man you're gonna look great in this sort of thing so yeah big up them anyway for the collab and bringing them back and hopefully even though i'm not a fan of the platform hopefully this means the shoe's going to come back going forward we see a lot more of these um wallaby boots going forward because i love the shape i love the shape moving on from that we have images courtesy of hypebeast regarding the adidas and gucci sneakers that be coming out it says here adidas and gucci gazelle sneakers i'm not sure if they're all gazelles but this is from the recent um 422 collection of gucci and um, they debuted an entire adidas collab which looks pretty sick to be honest not gonna lie they've used loads of the monogram or whatnot i like the fact that i don't know who did this first or why this is becoming a thing but these sportwear tie-ins with luxury brands is sick the fact that these because you'd imagine in an alternate universe some of these sportswear brands Hmm. yeah you'd imagine because they're so greedy you'd Im you'd imagine it'd be a scenario where nike would be like oh what's the point of collaborating with this luxury brand where we can just start our own luxury brand and then they do nike fashion run i don't know they do some nike plus xx stuff collection it doesn't sell well because no one's gonna buy into a nike fashion collection at all why not just marry up with a why not just marry up with the best brand out there and put stuff out and i'd like what they're doing now you know sportswear brand decides hey we can't do the fashion thing as well as you can and fashion guy says hey i can't do the sportswear thing as well as you can let's join up forces and put out the best product we can and that's what they've done so far so gucci have done different iterations of the gazelle it looks like i guess with the title of the article um i love them generally my only gripe is that unfortunately my feet don't really adhere to gazelles or the sizing for every reason the length works but then just because i've got a wide foot especially towards the front um the width doesn't work out too well so then i have to kind of get a size up but then that means then you know the length is obviously fucked up and i end up kind of slipping out of them so that's the only problem i have in terms of ideas but in terms of wanting to wear a pair of shoes i never wanted to wear a pair of shoes more than a pair of gazelles never went to wear them more but my foot just doesn't vibe with them too tough but yeah this reggae reggae um colorway with like the purple laces and this mustard um you know this two i'm a sucker for whatever these two applications of colors are usually they're linked so in the front of the top box you've got this kind of custody no you got this kind of brownie suede color then you got this yellow custody color that's a bit more plush i'm not sure if that's like a velvet or a suede and then that's a new buck or a suede but i love when brands do that with colorway sneakers where they have like similar tones of colors but in different materials so you get these different sort of effects and hues and over time when you wear them in they kind of fade in and fade out a little bit better i just don't know i love that sort of shit some sneakerhead stuff but i love it and then of course the contrasting laces or the purple pop you can't go wrong with that and then again the sole too you've got this kind of gummy brown so going on there then you've got this iteration which is again a classic iteration with the snakeskin upper and the green stripes and then at the back here you've got the gucci logo here with the adidas, adidas tray fake whatever it's called you've got another kind of classic gucci colorway with the green and reds like these are really done well the pink the turbo pink color like come on man and again that's what i said about the two different materials with its similar hues 
you've got the pink here on the body of the shoe in one hue whether it's a suede or whatnot a new book and then you've got another application of this another hue of the same sort of pink um different sort of material and then you get this nice effect going on there and again contrast that back with the kind of classic leather and the heel tab perfect that would be the ultimate job actually being able to be the you know colorway designer of some of these brands maybe some of the designing a shoe from the bottom up is probably a really daunting task because you can maybe start getting way too heady and doing crazy stuff that doesn't really look that great you know in in the flesh but i think the balancing of colors and tones and hues and textures is something that i would love to do in a probably really interesting role to kind of um, explore um, and obviously there's room as well to get that wrong as well i'd imagine then you've got of course a classic gazelle colorway in a sort of pine foresty green application with the white stripes with the classic white laces like oh, it's so good man so much good stuff here um i did i would anticipate this is going to be bucks on bucks on bucks no idea when it's going to come out of course but yeah keep an eye out for that regard keep an eye out for that if you're a fan of ALS because those look absolutely banging we can't even lie on that one then we've got news courtesy of hypebeast regarding the drake nocta air force one certified lover boys there was news that came out before that these had been scrapped because allegedly um according to people online especially sneaker twitter um they were saying that those little stars that they got on these air force ones because basically classic air force ones instead of stars they have sorry instead of hearts they have stars so they were saying that they were nike were finding it hard to manufacture these to a high quality standard and that they were going to scrap them which is which is stereotypical nike right for whatever reason nike find it impossible to make retros to spec even though they sell the majority of retros to sneakers like myself who have a long lasting or not have a long uh was a long never whatever that term is who have an affinity a connection with these two particular models who are the only people calling and crying out for these most to get retroed they retro them they don't make it to spec and then they start making excuses about why they can't make it to spec it's because the tooling is gone the mold is this it's like you're a multi-billion dollar company you should be able to figure it out and this is a case in point that imagine they've got a mold and they've got a sneaker that's as popular as the air force one it probably makes them billions per year and for whatever reason they can't adjust the mold that puts the stars on the outsole of the shoe to switch it to hearts allegedly which led to the production malfunction or whatnot but suppose that's changed because i've seen people receive pairs of these online and stuff so clearly they've changed it but that news earlier i think was true i do think they were having trouble manufacturing them which is why we i remember these leaked ages ago and then we didn't hear nothing for a long time and then out of the blue somebody leaks that news that they couldn't manufacture them then out of nowhere nike responds which they never do really in terms of clarifying a rumor and say hey no we actually are manufacturing they are coming out so clearly something changed between then and now who knows um take a close look because i'd imagine these were probably meant to come out when the album dropped right like why would you make a pair of certified lover boy air force ones which is a great idea too right um what's that live your what's that say what's that say on the side there live your forever love your forever cut on my such a light skin kind such a light skin drake and phrase but the only thing i'd say on this image specifically they do look a bit fake in it they look a bit weird the shape like that bit and how the peel pops out there right look a bit dodgy maybe it's a sample who cares but um the leather looks nice nice tumbled leather um classic all the way through i'm not sure if that's got a leather or nylon lining on the inside i know usually when it comes to lux collab air force ones they usually do a leather lining which i'd never a fan of because your feet end up slipping all over the gaff but still crispy air force ones in all white to tie in with your album called certified lover boy is a genius move i feel like um all this missing is an advert with him with like a borderline and some cubic zirconians or something do you know what i mean that's a classic sweet boy look in terms of a um in terms of a collab so i'm not mad at it in the slightest i'm not going to lie i'm not mad at it in the slightest it's just whether or not they're actually going to come out to regular folk like you and i we don't know um no release date here no information later this year i guess wait until it drops wait until it drops um well so to talk about Du, 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 du. i think that might be it for now because i think i'm already an hour in it i don't want to keep you guys for too long yeah already an hour hour 20 actually 
my god yeah Al Tony of the Agassiz was English show thanks again for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual if 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 it's the first time that you're checking out the show why not leave me a comment or whatnot um, if you're listening via the podcast app, there'll be a link down below to click the contact button so you can contact me directly via email and all that good stuff and what I have coming up maybe have a live stream coming up soon depending so keep an eye out for that in terms of DJ mix in terms of test mix tape keep out for that check out my photography of obviously on my website xnozinger.com I showed you previously let me get that for you again in case you haven't kept it in mind check out my site I'll be opening a store in there selling loads of cool zines and whatnot so if you like that kind of stuff then definitely check that out I've got different sections on there the blog will be updated soon DJ geeks have been dry so don't check that photography I'm updating all the time podcast is on there my DJ stand cards on there for mixes and stuff and of course the YouTube channel and the contact me button there too similar to the one you get to see on my podcast page as well which has got a contact button on there too if you want to check me out on that one um, it's the Agostino Zinger show dot com all one word the excellent show.com all one word you can click contact there and contact me on that side as well if you so wish but yeah apart from that Thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company and I'll see you guys again very soon. Until then, take care and be safe.